Hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 775. That is Cinco, I think, of the Agostino Zynga show. What's happening? What's cracker-lacking? I hope you are well wherever you find the show. I hope you're doing swimmingly. I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for asking. I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for blood clot asking. Well, I'm lying. I'm not doing pretty well. Um, it's today. What is what? Wednesday, I think, when you listen to this. It's the couple of days after United played flipping Crystal Palace. I'm still processing that horrible result. I'll obviously be speaking about it a little bit later on in the show. Um, it's just another realization of just how far we've fallen. And if anything, maybe it's a wake up call. Maybe it's a realization for myself included. Um, even though I've been kind of on tune with what's been happening in my club that there is no quick fixes, right? We're heading into what? I think it's now more than a decade. It's, it's like 11 years now that we've been under, you know, that, sorry, it's, it's more than 11 years that we've been under greater ownership, but it's now 11 years in the doldrums since Saf left um, Sarah Ferguson, the greatest manager of all time. We've basically been exposed because with these owners, the Glazers in charge, there's no real, there's no real light at the end of the tunnel because we've seen so far that unless they have a special manager in Sarah Ferguson, Unless they have somebody that's like literally a god, a god-given manager, who can just make you know miracles out of nothing, who can literally turn water into wine, they don't have a Scooby what to do to get us back to where we need to be. Um, we're going from manager to manager, structure to structure, player to player, always looking for a savior to kind of get us out of the doldrums when we probably need more than that. We don't need just a savior; we need an all-around root stem branch analysis type of situation which is never going to happen if we are owned by the same people who don't really seem to be caring too much about the footballing side of the club and i think nowadays we've just seen that finally the chickens have come home to roost that's basically what we're seeing because i don't have any you know as horrible as eric ten Hag is as a manager as much as he's disappointed me so far with how badly we've been playing I honestly don't think that he's as bad as he's making it seem as. I don't even think these players who are all hate, right? All of these players I might know that hate, if they all got run over by cars tomorrow, I wouldn't bat an eyelid. But I'm also not deluded enough to think that they're all terrible. There's something just about that club. There's something toxic, something cursed, something doomed about that club where everybody that steps foot in it fails. And the moment they leave, they succeed, right? Look at flipping Jaden Sab- Sancho and Marcel Sabitzer. Right, Jaden Sancho is one of our marquee signing. He falls out with Ten Hag. He gets shipped out and loaned back to Dortmund. He's tearing it up, and now he's in his final Champions League. Marcel Sabitzer comes on loan at United. Is somehow surplus of requirements, even though we don't have many good midfield options. Signs back to Dortmund, and now he's in the Champions League final. Why does it seem to be every other player that, and even the managers? Right? Look at flipping Kieran McKenna. Right, he's got flipping um his club back up into into the Premier League. I think Michael Carrick is gonna come close, or maybe he's gonna play. I'm not really too sure. But everybody outside of the club, as soon as they leave the club and go into like Parsha's new, the world just opens up for them. But in the club, things aren't changing. So I have a feeling that most likely we are cursed, actually legitimately cursed. Maybe it's all of the years that we, you know conceal the fact that ryan giggs was a piece of shit who was fucking his sister's wife maybe all those years of us you know running cover for players you know um Sir Alex ferguson's dodgy dealing with the horses maybe all that stuff that we did all that scumbag stuff we did back in the day has finally started to like you know come back and bite us in the ass because i honestly think we're cursed i literally think we're cursed because there's some united fans out there who legitimately think if we get a new manager in that we're going to be different there's some fans who are so delusional that they think all it's going to take is one elite manager to come in and then all of a sudden, after one season, we're challenging for the Premier League. It doesn't work like that, bros. We've been out of contesting for the champ. We've been out of practice contesting, competing with the top teams for 11 years. You don't just wake up and decide you're a top club again. It takes time. Look at what happened to Arsenal. They had to finish a couple of times outside the top five before they are doing what they're doing. Liverpool did the same thing when Flipping Klopp came. Even Man City had to kind of have a bit of a stumble. And we've been out of practice for 11 seasons. People to think that we're going to just get a manager who's going to come in like a Thomas Tuchel or something and just change things is absolutely delusional. But I guess that's part of being a fan. Part of being a fan is also being a bit delulu. But I'm rooted in reality. And from what I can see, 
we are in for a very rude awakening. All the other teams around us are pulling away. Um, decent managers who actually have ambitions, who actually have goals, who actually want to achieve things in the game aren't going to be rushing to sign for us unless we pay them an exorbitant amount. And even then, it's not going to be the key. And I think we're going to see in seasons coming up that we are way further back than we actually think. That's my prediction. My prediction is it's not going to get any better anytime soon. And United fans are finally going to see just how far off we actually are. Because I think a lot of United fans don't really know. They don't really see it. They don't really believe it. They just still have this hope. Oh, no, it's going to get better if we just sign a new player. Okay, cool. You wait. You wait and see. You wait and see how bad it's going to get. It's going to get worse than you've ever imagined. Just you wait and see. And to me, I'm a bit of a nihilist when it comes to this sort of shit. I want us to get relegated. I've said from zero, I want us to get relegated. If we get relegated, that's the only chance that the Glazers leave. The only other chance that they leave is if a helicopter crashes into a mountain or something, right? Which obviously, God forbid, you know, whatever. But unless that happens, we're stuck with the Glazers forever. And they've shown no ability, no desire to get us back to where we need to be footballing-wise. So the only way to get rid of the Glazers is to get relegated. And why do I say that? Because the Glazers fucked us over. They made it seem like they wanted to sell the club. Then they did a little bit of a double back. Then they only sold a portion of the club for way of a market value, which is a smart decision play. Even though they fucked us as fans because I thought we were finally going to get rid of them and we were going to start a new regime with an ownership, even if it's Qatar, I don't care who it was, but people who actually cared about sport and success. Because the weird thing about modern day football, if you're successful on the pitch, you actually become more successful in the boardroom. You actually land your pocket. So the Glazers are some of the most backwards owners I've ever seen. If they're just in, if they're just in it for the money, I don't really give a fuck. Invest in a team, and then the team's gonna give you more money, and then you're gonna go. But I kind of attribute the Glazer ownership of United similar to the Knicks. The guy that owns the Knicks is kind of the same from what I can see. The Knicks aren't really doing anything. They haven't won, I don't think, an NBA title since the '70s or some bullshit like that, right? But they're, you know, in especially in the NBA, there is no relegation, which is different as well. There. They're in one of the biggest, you know, most popular city in the world in New York. So, you know, as long as you just keep some ticking over, there's no real need to kind of press on with like trying to win a championship because they still make a ton of money for the owner, for the city. Um, the players still get paid. Everyone, you know what I mean? There's no, there's no reason to kind of go. And I think the same thing's happening with United because United are good enough where we're never going to be in danger of relegation the glazers are like you know what i'm gonna take my foot off the pedal what's the point of investing in the in a what's the point of really investing in the success of this team let's just keep taking money out let's just keep enjoying what we're enjoying getting flown around the place you know putting the fucking you know black cabs and taxis and private planes on the company card but actually if they would invest some money into the club in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of getting football in people who can actually do that job. The whole Ineos thing, I'm still, I'm not even too sure that's going to work out or it's going to work out. I think we're also going to be let down with that one. But if they actually committed to that, if they actually committed to giving Ineos all of the footballing decision power and just telling them, hey, you can run this club the way you want to run it, footballing side, it would actually make them more money. That's the mad thing about it. It would actually make them way more money than what we're doing now. Um, but yeah, me personally, I want us to get relegated. Um, I'd fucking love that. I think the players deserve that. You know, they've all been stealing a living for way too long. The, the likes of Luke Shaw's and, and all those high people would jump off the boat quickly as soon as we got relegated. I'd fucking love it. And we'd obviously get rid of the Glazers. So it is what it is. I'll talk more about it, obviously, in detail later on in the pod. But I just thought I'd open it up there with some nice, miserable Man United talk. Because why not? Because why not? So talking about sounding like an idiot and feeling like an idiot. I am currently on a fast at the moment. I'm going to be eating again sometime in the afternoon. Um, I'm going to be going to the gym in about six or so hours, right? So I'm going to be up for a very, very long time. And then I'm going to go to the gym and then I'm going to go straight to work, do some work, sleep, wake up again, do some more and then go to that little cycle that I do. But I just saw this picture of Buster Rhymes on the shade bar. And I'm thinking to myself, why am I working out? Why am I bother fasting? Why am I bother drinking water? Why am I bother doing all this sort of stuff if this is what people are doing? Why should I bother? Why should I bother doing all the things that I'm trying to do now if this is the game? If this is the actual game that we're seeing right now, if this is what's actually going on in the streets, this is what I should be doing, isn't it? This is actually this is exactly what I should be doing. Instead of worrying about fucking working out and being that workout idiot, what I should be doing is taking a bit of a Zempic. Because look at how good Buster Rhymes looks, right? Because we all know Buster Rhymes is like our male Oprah. 
he's been yoing up and down in his weight for a long time. He gets really swole, then he gets really fat, then he gets really ripped, then he gets really swole, then he gets really fat, then he gets really ripped. And, you know, he's a bit of a party boy. He's kind of like AD in that respect, right? AD from um ace boys and community and shit right who enjoys going out they they kind of you know disrespectfully um call him a party crip because of his tendency to go out with ot genesis and be busting the place up and doing what he's doing and you could tell with someone like an ad a lot of his weight is a lot of that stuff right party weight like you're going to the club you're drinking flipping tequila on the way home you're hungry so you're driving through chick-fil-a so you get that kind of weird party boy weight right where you might be able to fit into a pair of 34s or 36s but your belly's always sticking out a t-shirt right or it's or your jean jacket doesn't zip up properly or doesn't button up properly but you don't look that fat you're kind of like chubby fat chubby fat skinny type of thing and Buster Rhymes always had that shape now Buster Rhymes in this picture that I'm showing you right now if you don't see the picture and you just listen to the audio I do implore you to go to the shade bar and check it out because it says US rapper Buster Rhymes shows off his dramatic weight loss in recent pictures legitimately in this picture Buster Rhymes body wise if you didn't see his head you'd think that was Mick Mill this is a very Meek Mill type of fit. If you didn't see his head, you'd think that was Meek Mill. And if you know anything about Meek Mill, you know that he always looks very, for lack of a better term, sickly thin. I'm sure most of it has to do with, probably he probably has like IBS or Crohn's or something because he's always very, very skinny looking. Or maybe it's the drugs, I don't really know. But basically, Buster Rhymes basically looks the same build as Meek Mill right now. And it's obviously because of a Zempic because on the left-hand side, we have what Buster usually looks like when he's out in a club. And then on the right hand side is when he was trying to get swole and get kind of ripped up. He was obviously taking, you know, protein, you know, lots of protein, probably some steroids. He's got that swollenness going on. And if anything, anyway, his abs on the picture, they kind of look a little bit like, they kind of look a little bit etched on. I'm not going to lie. They, they kind of look like Drakeified. They kind of look Drakeish. But in the middle there, you see him legitimately skinny, legitimately slim. And it's making me wonder, am I wasting my time going to the gym? Should I just like, because I found somebody actually. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before on Taz, but I think I've mentioned it on a random show that I did find somebody on some dark net place somewhere that I'm not going to disclose. And they were selling not the, not the, not the liquid, but the powder that you can turn into a liquid. I Googled it and stuff, and there's ways to do it. You can basically turn whatever the powder is into liquid. You put that into a syringe and then bop. It's kind of looking like I'm doing heroin, but it's not. So I'm wondering, should I actually purchase that powder that's like 50 pounds or something, turn that shit into some dust and then squeeze it into my stomach and then pop out looking like fucking, you know, looking like Meek Mill or looking like Buster Rhymes, right? Pop out looking like Lil Nas X. <laughs> that's what I might need to do because all this working out shit, all this dieting shit, all this fucking drinking water shit, right? It's fucking long, isn't it? Maybe just injecting yourself is the way to go. It really is. And the thing that's interesting about Zempic is that sooner rather than later, I have a feeling, they haven't done it already yet because, you know, they haven't. I'm not sure why, but I have a feeling they're going to figure out a way to put a Zempic in the pill. Once they figure out a way to put a Zempic in the pill, it's over. Because I think there might be some people out there who are a little bit scared because it's a, it's a jab. I think um, the official one, it comes this really cool, like stylish pen that almost looks like a pregnancy test, pregnancy test, actually, the pen itself. Or it looks like a marker that you use to do graffiti on the wall. So I'm sure there's some people that are a little bit, you know, scared of needles and whatnot. So they won't do it now because of the prick. But once they figure out a way to synthesize, you know, whatever that concoction is in Ozempic into a pill, the amount of people that are going to be taking it is going to be crazy. It's already wild now because it's not widely available and mostly celebrities are doing it. It's, it's looking mad because you're seeing all your favorite celebrities that you've known to be fat cunts, you know, wake up one day and just turn into skinny minis. But the moment this shit hits the streets and they start selling it like fucking Adderall or they start selling it like Xanax or like, you know, any other pill. You know, remember, you remember when Xanax, I don't know if you guys, where you guys are based, but in London, when Xanax touched down in the streets of London, it took a lot of my friends' lives for a long period of time, like years. They got addicted to that Xanax so quickly. Some of them, it took their lives, unfortunately. We won't name the names, but if you know, you know. When Xanax hit the streets, people went wild for that shit in the UK. I can't imagine what happens 
when they synthesize the ozempic powder and put it into pill form and people can just put it in the end of their tongue one day they sleep go to sleep they're 46 waist they wake up in the morning they're 34 <laughs> it's gonna be insane bro it's gonna be insane honestly people don't know how crazy it's gonna get when ozempic touches the streets in pill form because yo there's so many people out there like myself who have good work ethnic um you know who like to hustle right who are out here flipping you know doing the god's work and trying their best to eat well when working out a bunch running doing whatever the cardio the lifting right doing the damn business and we're like oh it's so tiring it's so long it's so arduous and there's some people out there not even like me like i, I actually enjoy physical exercise i think it's very um, important especially for a man to know how to move his body to be coordinated to be able to lift up uh, heavy objects from the ground and put them somewhere else and carry bags in both hands without needing assistance and shit right and be able to you know put your your lady on your shoulder if her legs are fucking you know hurting or something or carry on her back if her heels are broke you know those type of, like gentlemanly nice things but just in general to be of use you know be able to carry a pram up some stairs down some stairs all these things are super important in the man's life so i think it's important to work out just because of that but obviously a byproduct of working out is that you get to look good naked right you get to look good when you're fucking yeah you, know, you get to look yourself in the mirror like a fucking american psycho and be pleased with what you see but there are some people out there who just want to look good in clothes that's the thing people don't realize there are some people out there who don't care about functional fitness they don't care about being able to look good in a bedroom all they care about is can i fit into my favorite jacket can I fit into this dress when I was in high school? Why high school? Because high school is the best memories I have of myself. I was popping. Everybody liked me. I was popular, blah, 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 blah. That's what people actually want. So once they synthesize this Ozempic shit into a pill, the streets will never be the same. All of your friends that you knew who used to call fat this, fat that, fat cow, fat Larry, fat Henry, fat Paula, fat Patricia, all these people, they will be no more will they be known as fat no more of these guys that used to call big guy they won't be they, they you you can't call them big guy anymore because they'll be skinny minis i predict that because these celebrities are tearing through ozempic like it's flipping cornflakes what's your comment here um baby that was empty getting y'all that was empty working wonders on those celebrities but they can't but they can't keep none in the pharmacy and of course there's a clear picture of look him he legit looks like Meek Mill. Oh my God, look at the picture. <gasps> oh my God. Is that how big he was? That's the thing about weight, isn't it? You never know how fat you are until you lose weight. Jesus Christ. Buster Rams was huge. Look at him now. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay, bro. I get it. I get it. And so what? You might get... And that's the thing as well about the saggy face. I don't think it's that bad. I think some people are just giving extra. I think some people are getting Ozempic and are doing the most. They're not eating at all. They're going all the way in too crazy. I think you can do it in a good way, especially if you work out as well. You can do it and you won't get the droopy face and shit and you'll look perfectly okay. I saw somebody actually mention, I think I saw an article somewhere where they said another side effect, another unintended side effect of Ozempic isn't only just a droopy face it's something called ozempic personality or something and i don't know if that was a troll or something or whatever but i'm assuming that must have to do with people maybe getting some newfound of confidence <laughs> right people that have been fat their whole life suddenly get skinny and they realize oh shit being actually able to fit into regular clothes is actually pretty cool it gives you some weird sense of confidence and now suddenly you walk around like your nuts are fucking you know are made out of gold no one can tell you anything legitimately so that might be part of it but yeah look at that bro the before and after is just wild on a zen pick but yeah when that touches the streets of the uk it's going to be a wrap and like i said i'm i'm tempted to go and try this powder that i've been said might be able to work and synthesize that into some liquid and then get that shot up into my belly and then i'm going to come through looking like alton mason next time you see me on this godforsaken stream and i don't want anyone i don't want anyone to say anything to me I don't want a single person to have a word to say about me when I do pop out of the place just looking sl s svelte, right? Looking like a fucking ruler. I don't want anyone to fucking say a word to me. Don't email me. Don't give me a message. D DM. Leave me alone. Just say congratulations, okay? Just say congratulations when you see me. You see me step out. <laughs> 
like a coat hanger just say congratulations don't say oh my god i can see you know you're making a mistake and i don't want to hear your well i don't want to hear your well-intended advices okay no no advices let me be skinny okay cool bless talking about skinny talking about skinny minis I was thinking about this in a while, and I don't know if this makes any sense because I'm not too sure if this is going to make me sound like a P-U-S-S-Y to all of my fellas out there, or if this makes me sound like somebody that has a semblance of, um, um, you know, rational, rationability, rationality has a semblance of uh, common sense. But let's let's hear what you think. So I saw this post on the UK Gossip, the TV Instagram account that says Lancey Foe and Joyce Wavy are Instagram official. Most of you know who Lancey Foe is, the UK based hip hop artist or rapper in general, who's absolutely tearing up the streets, doing great things and obviously models and stuff and whatever else in the part time as well. And just all around cool dude. He's now dating this lady called Joyce Wavy, who I know only because of pandemic times. I'm not too sure if you remember her, but she was the hot mixed race looking girl who'd be DJing at home and did doing mashups and shit. And I think she kind of got popular during the pandemic times and kind of blew up on the UK side of Instagram because I guess maybe there's not a lot of these like IG baddie looking girls in the UK. So when one pops up, everyone kind of goes crazy. Cool. Anyways, I guess Lancey, by now, it's been official that he's broken up with Leomi. So he's no longer with the supermodel Leomi. So now he's with this lady. And it made me wonder in general, like, maybe it's not for it's not for all of us to be with the bad b maybe being with an ig baddie is probably more trouble than what it's worth for most people it's probably that's what that's probably what explains in my head at least why these people seem to always date each other like they all seem to live in the same orbit like you don't really you know you're never gonna see lancy foe ending up with some girl who works at tesco express right you're never gonna see joycey wavy you know getting with some dude who works in a recruitment agency in fucking Old Gate East. You know what I mean? It wasn't going to happen that way. So there are always going to be people within the same sort of orbit that were going to be like together. And there might be a reason for it because that level of attention, that level of money, the looks and whatever it may be, it's probably not, it's probably too much for a regular person to handle, isn't it? The kind of attention that your missus is going to get when you're out and about, the kind of attention that you generate when you're out and about, it's probably too much for most men, most regular dudes to handle, which is probably why they all have to date within the industry because they're all flying around, doing whatever. They're used to that attention. It's not that big of a deal. Whereas I think for regular dudes, myself included, it's probably very, very, very risky to kind of go down that route. <laughs> You're probably going to be playing with fire and it's not going to go well, probably, because, you know, Lancey Foe has been out here with this is currently the girl that he's with allegedly the previous one was this one yeah Leone Anderson right one of the premier supermodels here in London and shit these are not normal people <laughs> you know what I mean these are the kind of people that when they walk like that's the thing I, I, I think people don't realize as well like I've only been around it because of you know my interest in fashion my interest in streetwear but I don't know if you guys have actually been in a room where a legit attractive person is in or when they walk in. Like sometimes it changes the app. It changes the temperature of the room. The atmosphere changes. Like you know how weird it is sometimes when you're in a gym and there's like a girl working next to you and you almost get the feeling that everybody's like on 10, especially the dudes. Like I feel it, especially in the gym that I go to. Whenever there's a girl next to you, everyone's like kind of ex trying extra hard, which I feel is extra lame. If anything, if I see anybody like that, I just, you know, I kind of just black out, put my head down and just pretend no one's around me. But you see everybody else kind of reacts in a way. And the same thing happens when really attractive people walk into a room. It's a lot. So imagine you're walking into a room with somebody who is conventionally attractive and, and everybody else in the room wants the person that you have. <laughs> it's almost like you're trying to keep the wolves at bay. So it must be its own issue. So I think probably to kind of alleviate that issue, it's probably beneficial when you're both clouded and you both kind of need each other. Because then when you walk into a room, you're both kind of, you know, emitting that kind of like clouty whatever energy that you both have. That's probably the only way to kind of go about it. I'd imagine anyway. Again, I don't really know too much, but I'd imagine that's probably the only way to go about it. I looked at it, I was thinking, fuck, bro. Like every day being with this, like just, you know what I mean? Batty out, tits out teeth out eyes glowing and they're always super nice you know talking smelling amazing and shit and you have to just stand there <laughs> while they work the room oh 
that's a lot that's a lot you know what i mean that's gonna test a lot of your fucking resolve as a dude i think so but you know maybe i'm wrong maybe it's maybe it's me admitting without admitting that i don't have the minerals to hold something like this down maybe it is um to be fair who knows but either way big up fucking lancey foe he definitely has the minerals he definitely has the minerals moving on to people that have minerals there's also this been made official courtesy of instagram and again this is something I, i'm pretty ashamed to be talking about but hey it is what it is slow news week this is in regards to Drewski and Ruby Rose making their love on social media official. Usually nowadays, to make it official, you post a picture of yourselves in the mirror, doing the whole couple's date thing, your hands with your Von Cleef jewellery and Rolexes, holding each other's hands on the dinner table. But now they decided to do the, you know, the corny thing on a boat and be lipsing each other up to make people know, no, 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 we're actually together, 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 right? And as you can see here, um Drewski leans in for a kiss ruby rose leans in for one too they're having a good time he sticks a hand to that hand back there and sticks his whole whole tongue inside her mouth right that's a man who's happy to be with a fucking baddie now i'm wondering this this is what i'm wondering how does this end <laughs> i'm wondering how does this end because it is gonna end and when it does end, it's going to be, that's the problem with like dating someone like that, because the only way is down really, isn't it? Unless you com constantly compete in that baddie world, you're then going to end up, you know, with somebody else, somebody else, you're then going to end up with somebody else that everyone else has been with. You're kind of playing with fire, isn't it? With your heart, with your expectation, because now that girl at fucking, you know, at Home Depot doesn't look so tasty anymore because you've been beating this, do you know what I mean? or beating this lady on the screen it's not going to be as appealing anymore some girl you meet at some lounge bar because your standards have now been changed you know you've tasted caviar now you can't go back to fucking wing stop it's impossible so that's the only issue with like dabbling into this field unless obviously you know it turns out to be love and you guys stay together forever you have a child you get married amazing cool congratulations do your thing but the likelihood of that happening isn't likely um, you can't force it as well. Um, you might be a bit older. I don't know if Drushki's a bit older than Ruby Rose. I'm not really too sure. But either way, it's like, what do you do, bro? Because you know the end is coming. So do you just enjoy it for what it is? Live it up? Get your pictures? Get your content? And if anything, the good thing about stuff like this, especially for a dude, from what I've noticed, I think I've even had this thing with me before where if you date somebody that's like, if you date somebody that other girls think is hot, because for guys, it doesn't really matter. But if, you know, other girls rate them, usually it rubs off on you as a guy and people start to look at you differently so you know part of the beauty of hooking up with somebody that's actually attractive is that it improves your stock so for drewski maybe hey it doesn't end well it goes to shit but at least at least you've shown the world that you can bag a baddie and it's also shown you have baggy attraction energies so all the baddies out there will be like <laughs> sniffing you out you know what i mean wanting to fucking have a taste of your fucking saliva in their mouths too maybe that is also part of the beauty of it because whew, i don't know bro i don't know it's gonna be hard day to day you know what i mean just keeping the composure but you know maybe it's fun it looks fun <laughs> maybe it's fun maybe it's actually worth the squeeze maybe the juice is actually worth the squeeze when you're there hanging out on a boat in miami somewhere having a good time you know what i mean smiling for the gram right lips in every day like that's maybe it's actually fun maybe it's actually fun and worth the hassle maybe we don't know either way wishing drewski and ruby rose all the love and joy and luck in the world who knows it might work out it might fucking work out you never 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 know moving on let's talk about drake unfortunately there's been a shooting at drake's house man damn 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 no idea this has anything to do with the whole kendrick beef i doubt it 
um, because he lives in Toronto. If you know anything about Canada, you'll know that they have crazy gang problems over there. There's a ton of um, YouTube documentaries you can check out, which really break it down very, very well. But Canada is not a place to play with. Toronto is not a place to play with. Um, so I can imagine with Drake always keeping, you know, a road nigga or two on by his side or him just being involved in some stuff because there's loads of bars in Drake's tunes. Unless you're really plugged into the Canada Toronto scene, you won't really clock. So I think a lot of them might have to do with stuff that's been happening on the streets over there that you wouldn't know unless you're plugged in, blah, 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 blah. But some people are suggesting it could be the Kendrick shit. I really doubt it. But regardless, um, Drake's house was shot up, um, actually. Oh, his mansion, sorry. Somebody shot on the outside and unfortunately struck his um, security guard or bodyguard. Now, I don't know if it's the bodyguard with a beard in the video or if it's somebody else. But allegedly, you know, somebody drove by in a car and shot the bodyguard. And they are in hospital at the moment with life-threatening injuries. I saw last time. So let's read the article courtesy of NBC News shooting outside of Drake's Toronto mansion leaves security guard injured so here's the article it says a shooting outside Drake's mansion let's get this clip off um, in Toronto early on early morning on Tuesday left the security guard seriously injured police said the shooting happened just after 2 a.m. at a residence in Park Lane Circle a representative for the Toronto born out so for the Toronto born rapper who's made headlines since his beef with Kendrick um, said Drake was not injured it's not clear if the rapper was home at the time I guess he was home that's why they're talking about it I'm assuming when officers arrived at the residence they found a security guard suffering from an apparent gunshot wound inspector um, Paul Kresik said at a news conference the security guard was standing outside the gate when he was injured I've always been surprised I'm not gonna lie maybe I'm confused or maybe Toronto is actually really beautiful I've always been surprised that Drake being an international star that he is went back and actually built that mansion in toronto like he actually lives there full time he's obviously got homes all over the place but he lives in toronto more you know w way more months out of the year than not i was actually surprised by that i thought he would have just you know decided to live you know maybe somewhere in la or whatever new york but yeah he's, he's actually he actually lives day to day in, in toronto which is interesting police said in a news conference or sorry police said in a news release that they believe the man was shot from a vehicle which then fled the scene he remains hospitalized in serious conditions, says a police officer. Um, he also said that they do not know how many suspects were involved. Police have been speaking with witnesses, canvas in the area for additional video. Anyone with information has asked to contact the police department. But I'm assuming because it's Drake's mansion, most likely they've got video anyway. They just want an additional video. There's definitely a video, a, a closed circuit, you know, CCTV story around the premises for sure. It's definitely, especially, out, especially outside the gates. Um, I did read one time that they allowed Drake to build no more than normal more than normally high gates outside his mansion i think there's a particular height you're allowed to have the gates but he was allowed to build them extra high because obviously the you know how famous he is and shit police have been speaking to witnesses and cameras in the area for additional video anyone patients asked to contact police department i've actually got a clip here courtesy of the of the twitter that actually shows a police talking about it outside his mansion let's actually watch this quickly let me refresh the screen but there's actually a video here where the police person speaks about it and i think the media are already trying to spin it as a drake and kendrick beef which is fucking idiotic really especially if you have no evidence of it but you know media is always going to media so i guess that kind of is what it is but let's listen to this press conference where the toronto police um you know what's that what's that what's that tell the toronto police integrated gun and task force providing an update jesus christ they're taking it seriously isn't it they've got the gun force involved jesus all right let's see what they say here concerning what actually happened i'm curious to see what the actual developments are coming what they are from the actual horse's mouth and not from these stupid fucking people let's see what they say here Good morning everyone i'm inspector paul krofcheck of the integrated gun and gang task force and uh, i'm pleased to be here today i know there's a lot of interest in this incident and i hope you can also appreciate that Information is very limited at this time, so I only have so much. What I do know, I will advise you of, and I will take a few questions at the end. This morning at about 2 a.m., police were called to a shooting at the residence behind me here. When officers arrived, they located a male who was suffering from an apparent gunshot wound. Damn. That male was taken to hospital in serious condition. That person was working apparently as a security guard at the residence. He was standing outside of the gates in front of the residence when the shooting occurred. We have uh, individuals who obviously performed the shooting. 
who were seen in a vehicle. I do not have a description of the vehicle or the suspects at this time. Again, it's very early on in the investigation. I can't wait until, because you know it's already happening. I can't wait until the YouTube detectives get on it and find out who it is, because they're going to find out. It always happens this way, because gangsters nowadays are super loud. They're super reckless, super dumb. So probably someone's going to post something online alluding to the fact that they did something, blah, blah, blah. It's going to get out sooner rather than later. It's going to get out for sure. I cannot speak to a motive at this time because it's so early. But as we get information, we will share it with you. Anyone with information is asked to call 416-808-2510 or Crime Stoppers. You can expect to see an increased presence in this neighborhood for the next little while, but it's no different than any other shooting or firearm discharge. We'll have officers here looking for witnesses to come forward, as well as we can canvassing for video. I'll now take a few questions. I cannot confirm if Drake was home at the time the incident occurred, but I can tell you that we are in contact with his team and they are cooperating. <laughs> so I am aware of what you're talking about but uh, it is so early in the investigation that so I we don't have a motive at this time aware. and so I cannot comment further Accents, on that. Jesus Christ this, up, this reporter so there is this is no different than any other investigation okay like it's m maybe more high profile because there's more people here, but we treat it like any other incident. So we'll be using all our resources. Our teams will be uh, doing as much as they can to investigate this, but it'll be no different than any other investigation at this time. So I can tell you that uh, all I'm going to say about the victim is that he's still in the hospital in serious condition. And I'm not going to just. Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to do it this time. Uh, this is obviously a, a very wealthy uh, neighborhood. There's likely a lot of uh, video around. Have you guys been on your camera team? Do you expect to get a good amount of video? Uh, I would be surprised if we didn't. Uh, I can say that we've already collected some uh, video evidence which uh, captures the incident. You said suspects plural. Can you say, are we talking two, three, or more? No idea at this time. Is this a drive by shooting or more specifically just a swap and open fire? Uh, I'm not going to get into uh, specifics about the investigation at this time, just that it uh, a vehicle was involved and then fled. Anyway, you get the gist of what happened there. Um, I wonder if this is thinking about it. Didn't that guy recently get shot from um, the weekend's crew? Didn't something happen outside of his house? I wonder if this is retaliation for that. Huh. Yeah, something happened recently, right? Yeah, there we go. Security guard shot outside twelve million dollar Encino Encino mansion owned by Cash XO, who's I guess the manager of XO, which is obviously the Weekends Group Collective record label thing. Um, a security guard was shot and injured outside a twelve million dollar mansion in the upscale Encino community Monday morning, prompting a search for three suspects. Um, the shooting happened at 2.45 a.m. on Jaden Lane near Encino Avenue, according to Los Angeles Police Department. It happened at the home owned by Amir Esmialian, an Iranian-Canadian music industry executive and co-manager of the Music Eyes The Weeknd. Um, Esmalian, who's known by the industry as Cash XO, also worked with the artist Travis Scott. Yeah, so I wonder if this is a retaliation for that. That's wild though, isn't it? They got they got they got shooters over in fucking Toronto to go get some get back for cash. So your bodyguard gets dumped, my bodyguard gets dumped. We're gonna go for, to war. By the way, look at LA fucking prices of mansions. Again, I don't know the house, I haven't seen it, I don't know what it looks like. But twelve million dollars for only a seven bedroom mansion is pretty steep, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I think twelve million for only seven bedrooms is not that much. God damn it, bro prices of homes in la are crazy the view of the a 70 hd show the investigators focusing attention on the back of the home where basketball court are seen with ensemble of xo okay so there's a there's actually a picture of it i don't know what i can't, don't, I can't to get it up um it's very safe neighborhood so yeah maybe that's uh 
retaliation for what happened to Cash. Maybe. Either way, I'm um, pretty crazy that Drake's involved in the shooting, especially when you consider the level of artist that he is, right? He's, you know, mainstream as it gets, the number one rapper out there, but he's also not somebody that you would attribute to, you know, this level of violence or gang activity. So um, maybe it's showing there is a little bit of an edge to him or whatever's going on there, who knows? But I'm sure we're going to find out exactly what's happening within the next couple of weeks and shit when all the YouTube detectives get on it and goons start talking and posting pictures. It's going to get out there for sure. It's going to get out there. Um, I'm hoping it's nothing to do with Kendrick. If it is, then the beef has definitely gone ugly. It's already gone kind of ugly because they're calling each other, you know, women beaters and pedos and shit. But if this is a Kendrick escalation, oof, this beef's going to get tasty especially for the listeners obviously for everybody involved safety wise it's going to be peak but again as just a pure fan of music it's going to be fucking tasty so um blessings and prayers to all involved hopefully they can record some more tunes selfishly so we can listen to and we're going to keep on going and we're going to keep on going next we've got this news courtesy of live nation or courtesy of seen it exactly um but obviously regarding live nation everybody online is coming themselves over this announcement right everybody online i've seen so far is literally coming into their trousers and most of it has to do with most of these accounts i follow being plants and agents of the fucking record industry and whatever so this headline says concert tickets to over fifty thousand sorry to over five thousand shows are up to 75 percent off for live nations events right and basically the premise of what i'm talking about is that live nation is running a special promo from the 8th to the 14th of may where most tickets to most shows are going to be 25 dollars, right a pretty crazy little deal but i don't think this is something to get excited about or wank over number one ticket prices for music for live music shows are exorbitant anyway they shouldn't be as much as they are most tickets to live music shows unless you're paying for like a-list people like i saw videos of madonna performing in fucking brazil where she's got legitimately over i think it's over a hundred thousand people maybe even more maybe half a million on the fucking streets in the in the outdoor arena thing she's performing and singing every word those type of artists they deserve every bit of money if, if they if they're charging a hundred dollars two hundred dollars five hundred dollars they deserve it everybody else shouldn't be charging over fifty dollars to go see them you're not worth it nobody knows who you are like relax take it easy cool they do that anyway they all charge crazy amounts it's fucking crazy but if you get into the actual nitty-gritty of it none of that ticket money actually goes to the artists so it's not like the artists are the ones that are trying to scam us fans it's the fucking record labels who are in business with the venues who are also in business with the people that hold the rights to the fucking music themselves so to make it worse keep this in mind right so live nation are out here trying to act like they're the good guys they're trying to act like they're saving the industry but do you remember what happened last year just last year do you remember this headline from fucking last year curse of the rolling stones club acts won't have to fork over merch money to live nation anymore live nation last year or maybe a few years before that was starting to cut into the merch money that artists were making when they were fucking going on tour because as some of you will know um digital streaming platforms like you know like fucking uh pod um apple sorry like spotify like apple music they don't pay that well so a lot of these artists don't make a lot of money off their music which is already crazy right imagine you're an artist imagine you dedicated your your life to making music um to connecting with your fan base to telling your story whatever it may be and you can't make money from that you make some but not a lot you make like half a penny if that on the streams and you know it's fucking crazy so most of the splits in terms of the money mostly go to the record label and whoever owns the rights or the publishing or whatever it may be especially if you're having to pay a 360 anyway the only way for artists to make money was for them to do live show which is why every artist you know whether they're really small or really large are always on the road always touring always going to perform places because that's the only way they can get a hold of money that's the only way they can get money for their art so in most places they go and tour they get some money for the show and they also make additional money by selling merch live nation these greedy cunts some of these live nation you know live nation basically are in business with most record labels the record labels already own the entirety of these artists and sometimes the rights to their likeness if they pass away they can use their voices to make more music via ai all this nonsense scammy shit right so they earn all that money off them they put them in 360 deals they don't give them the publishing they don't give them their masters and then live nation were going further to piss off and to fuck over the artists by taking their merch money 
so that any money they made via merch when they did their live shows they'll take a certain percentage i remember seeing a certain i don't know what band it was but a band basically complaining and saying that live nation were requesting over 75 percent of their earnings from merch imagine that you don't make enough money as a band anyway because everyone's fucking listening to hip-hop and shit you go out and tour the only way you can make a bit of extra money is to sell some merch you sell a ton of it because your fans want to get it you know no one really likes buying merch online these days you prefer to buy a live show you buy it and the money doesn't even go to the fucking you know to the band 75 percent of it goes to the label 75 percent of it goes to fucking live nation so the fact that they're acting as if they did something by giving people 25 dollar you know tickets from the 8th to the 14th which is obviously a small window and only involves a certain amount of access nonsense this should be the fee that most artists should be able to charge most of this shouldn't go to fucking live nation it should go to the pocket of the artists themselves and then we can move on accordingly but they don't deserve any ratings for doing the bare minimum they don't deserve any ratings for doing the bare minimum doing the right thing because they've been doing the wrong thing for so fucking long so fuck live nation fuck live nation continuing on on the music front continuing on on the music front we have to talk about my favorite club in the world your favorite club in the world bitch you guessed it burger and panorama bar so burger and panorama bar put out the lineup the program for june it's a new month the june lineup is already out and i am over the fucking moon I could legitimately ejaculate in my pants right now at the lineup that I have to show you regarding June. So to start off, the first weekend of June, which is the first of June, this first Saturday, look already this fucking lineup. Bergheim main room, you've got Daria Kulosova playing, who I feel like she's become like an unofficial resident, weirdly enough, which is pretty cool because she it felt like she was kind of going in the business techno type of lane but she kind of steered it back in and now is kind of highly regarded because i felt like her boyfriend husband whatever etap kyle he was the one i felt like had a bit more of a solid reputation solid kind of you know notoriety in that club but she's also come in and did her thing and from what i can see on the on the listing she's always there so big up to dire crossover fucking smashing it you got fido playing you got Ina kax kaiser len faki marcel deepman playing there back again nice to see him there um and then you got ron albert and then of course in panama bar this is for me the best lineup i've seen in a long time and i'm and i have it to decide which lineup to go to because this is fucking crazy you got you got arm from innovision playing right who i'm a big fan of you got heidi lorden absolute legend big up her you got Mer M marie mox and monks terrier i always pronounce her name wrong marie mox terrier playing as well who i'm a big fan of you guys know this and of course one of my djing heroes seth fucking troxler that's already one two three four people that I'd easily pay 25 to 50 dollars to see each of them playing one time in a club in london and all four are playing in fucking panama bar on the same night along with nemo along with francesco menudi along with Deepa, along with castro like god damn it what a good lineup then we go back to the fucking list and we say you know what, what else is a good lineup look at this you got a random line you got a random gig with dax j playing in the in, in the sour room which is kind of like their live performance space i don't know what he's going to be doing there he's doing a 10 to 5 night i don't know if there's any more details about what's happening there not really got any details so i'm assuming there's some sort of live show dax j's back to into kind of prominence i wasn't really a fan when i saw him recently i think in e1 a few years ago he kind of sounded a bit shit um but so, uh, regarding what i've heard online he's kind of back to his form before so that's great to see so dax j's performing there we've got a love on the rocks night happening we've got christian ab who i'm a big fan of again if you're a house person i recommend you check out the love on the rocks nights and christian ab is definitely one of my um favorite house minimal type djs to kind of check out and of course crombie is one i'm a big fan of so big up those two um again the following club match here who else you got here playing which i'm a big fan of you've got here on the 8th of june you've got renee wise is closing that's the one that i kind of want to go to so i have to decide do i go on the first and then see panorama bar um, and all those guys playing or do i switch it and try and go in the second week of june and then see Renee Wise closing Bergheim main room. And then in a fucking panel room. Look at who you got in a panel room. Like, come on, man. Par talk. You know what I mean? Violetta, Yun Sung. Like, come on, mate. Come on. That's good enough to go. Do you know what I mean? Good enough. But 
I'm not too sure. I'm going to have to decide because for sure this is going to be the night that all the heads are going to be there, right? All the all the cool kids are going to be out in force for this one because Rene Wise closing Bergheim for the first time is a big, big deal, um, especially considering he's come up and whatnot. So that should be a fucking good one. Um, and of course, you've got Fadi Mohem on there. You've got Esposito, a big fan of um, Eftemin, who, in, in my opinion, is another very underrated um, Bergheim residence, resident in the same lane as like N. Bautkammer. So that would be cool to check out. Um, you've got a poem by alpha knight uh you also got weirdos happening this is also good oh no what the fuck really chippy non-stop is playing burghai that's hilarious <laughs> she's so shit chippy non-stop is there <laughs> playing back to back at lol snake i love her she's really awesome um rachel noon is also really good um but wow chippy non-stop is playing in burghai that's fucking wild that's why i'm thinking you know what if i'm peggy goo i'm pissed if I'm Peggy Goo, I'm saying, look, if Chippy Nonstop can play in Berg, in, well, I guess it's not technically Bergheim, it's a sour room, but whatever. If Peggy, non if Chippy Nonstop, Peggy Nonstop, if Chippy Nonstop can play in Bergheim, so can Peggy Goo. So if I'm her, I'm pissed. I'm calling my agent. Like, that's, that's, that's not cool. I'm not having that. Do you know what I mean? Like, no way, because Peggy has enough of a reason, enough of a right to go play there if that girl's playing there, because she's fucking garbage. But again, just me i don't know what i'm talking about um finest fridays on the 14th another really good one um again for the house heads i can't say enough good words about pablo boozy um synth pop new wave indie dance um ebm just incredible really fucking good honestly if you if you're a fan of that type of shit um you know I recommend you check him out. Honestly, like, there's nothing else I can say about him. He's so fucking good. Pablo Bozzi, definitely one of my favorites. So definitely check him out. Brian Kessler as well. Um, actually, I think he might have a new EP out at the moment. No, I think he's got a new EP out at the moment. But either way, um, Finals Fridays on the fourteenth with Pablo Bozzi and Brian Kessler will be good. Um, the following friday saturday on the 15th um this is a really good night you got boris here playing i'm a big fan of kelza uh rika zalan i'm also a good fan of philip philip apasha uh panorama bar who do i like here alinica i like soundstream i like uh virginia i like monty luke i like um you've got a crack night happening as well with dying so oh oh i thought i thought that was dying syndrome i'd say no it's drag syndrome okay somebody different we continue on another big night that i'm also thinking of going to is the 22nd um bergheim main night uh, bergheim main room dvs1 leah uchi um parama bar you got chris cruz who's another really good um house disco ish type dj delano smith is a legend good jansen one of my favorite djs playing and producers um and who else oh you got black De devil disco club as well playing in soul so this is a very housey oriented night actually if you think about it it's very light and fluffy even with ryan elliott and steffi playing main room a lot of this is very housey so this is a very lovely this is a this is a probably night if you're going to come to a night in bergheim and you're going to wear your normal clothes that you usually wear because i do advise that my advice to most people is don't turn up there looking like a fucking techno ninja go there wearing what you'd usually wear like, like wear like a bright shirt or something you know put, put some color on why the fuck not um this is a good night to do it on the 22nd that's a good night because a lot of these people are quite disco-y housey um you know party vibes um adjacent but again i could be wrong and then scrolling 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 down um one of the bigger nights again for the end of the month is the 29th with it features ben clock in the main room og is there um ggfm orgazon um, you got set up Seattle Mass, who a lot of people are a big fan of as well. Um, he's definitely somebody people look at in terms of the same vein as like the Marons and the Rene Wises and shit. So if you're a fan of that type of vibe, you'll definitely like him. Um, I like him as well, but he always looks very sweaty when I see him play. I'm not too sure if it's the Ketty or if it's just him in general. I don't, I, I don't like the sweat. He just looks very sweaty all the time when I see him. But he, he looks like a fucking, he, he plays amazing stuff, great producer and shit, but just too sweaty for my liking. Uh, Pano Bar, you got Ida, Cormac, who I'm a big fan of, great fucking disco DJ. Um, definitely one of my favorites. Jennifer Loveless, Joe DeLeon, Katy, um, sorry, Katie De Jesus, and one of my favorite underrated, um, Pano Bar DJs in general, N Balkama, and they're generally a good guy, a nice guy. Whenever I've bumped into him, Pano Bar and said hi, he's always said hi back, which is lovely because, you know, 
I've had some very dicey runnings with DJ. So whenever <laughs> I see him and my jaw swinging from left to right and he still says hi to me, it always kind of fills me with joy. So I'm going to be an end Balkheimer, um, you know, defender for the end. And of course, Optima as well. Less said about him, the better. Obviously, absolute legend. So that should be fucking good. But yeah, um, all in all, stacked June lineup. Absolutely stacked June lineup. But I have seen some people specifically on you know the forums and whatnot and the spaces and the reddits and the instagram pages complaining about this lineup saying oh it's just the same old se-. it's like people are spoiled isn't it and it's, it's understandable why because berlin's one of the best dance music cities in the world legitimately one of the best dance music cities in the world there's so many clubs um the culture around clubbing is really mature it's kind of it's really i guess mainstream that's what you could call it right you don't look you're not looked at as a freak if you de- if you rave out a lot it's, you know there's not a lot of like lifestyle shaming as there is over here in the uk um you know there's a there's a grown-up attitude towards drugs and alcohol and shit and fucking all this sort of stuff right it's just a fun place to go and party and to you know enjoy the music dance meet new people bloody blah 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 and obviously because of that it's also the mecca for people to move over there for that shit so i'm assuming a lot of labels are over there or in the vicinity a lot of artists live there all the big clubs people want to play at are in there so it makes sense but i think if you just kind of zoom out a little bit and just look at the fucking lineup that's on these you know the names listed here and you think about the you know the price that they pay so that they charge you is like what 30 euros maybe 10 more if you do a re-entry or five or ten more if you do a re-entry in total let's say 50 euros including your train ticket to go to the place 50 euros to see all of these people at any given night and the night ends on fucking monday come on bro like come on be a little bit grateful i understand if you live there in berlin and you are really obsessive over the lineup and checking who how many new names are there I, I can understand why seeing some patterns of the same people is annoying like for instance people always complain about dario colosova right whatever that aside let, let's say she's on there too much you still got all the other names on there who legitimately in london specifically you're paying at least 30 pounds to see dario play on her own on the lineup with other people you don't really give a fuck about let alone you got everyone else playing there marcel Dietman, ron alberch like Fidel, come on man like like and then you, and then you and then in the same club you've got a room where if you don't like oots 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 you don't like fucking hard fast dark techno with people wearing double sold fucking dr martins and harnesses and stuff if you don't like all that sort of shit you can go into a room upstairs where it's light and airy and hear people you know like um Castro Deepa, Francesco Menudi, Hi- Heidi Lorden, Heidi Lorden, sorry, um, Marie Moxteria, Nemo, Seth Trucks are playing. Like, you can all in the same space. You don't have to leave and go somewhere else. So, I don't know, man. I think the Berlin people are kind of spoiled. Really, really fucking spoiled. And again, think about it. This place is a cultural institute now, right? It's become a cultural institute, which basically means it's never going to close anytime soon. Unless, obviously, the founders decide to sell up and do other things. The, you know, the state is never going to forcefully try and close Bergheim because it's essentially looked at as you know a heritage site whereas where what other club can you name in the world that has that kind of prestige you know adorned onto it basically means it's going to be around forever and they do a good job of kind of keeping it ticking over year in year out I think you know it's again yes is it not barnstorming cool but all things considered it's a fucking sick lineup like it really fucking is and see people complain about this shit i was like wow man these guys don't really know how good they have it honestly please spend the summer in london not even london come please spend the summer in fucking manchester and try and see how many weekends you can legitimately go out and have a really good night and and most of the time it's not even the fault of the promoters it's just going out it's just so fucking random here the you know the, the temperature the fucking the attitude of the people it's just all over the place even if you do all the right things you have the door picker you have all these type of things it's, you still can't control how you're not especially if you work monday to friday and you want to go out on a weekend you're having to rush home pre-drink leave your house by what 11 to get to the club or maybe 12 that might close at three honestly these people in berlin don't know how good they have it man they really don't know how good they have it but yeah big up Berghain. i love the venue i love the fucking lineup june 2024 is looking like a big one i'm not too sure what i'm gonna do in terms of the dates because i want to go to like four of these dates and obviously i don't live there <laughs> so i can't do all of them but i legitimately could go to the first of june for that particular night that's definitely what i want to i will definitely 
love to go to that i would also love to go on the following um on the 8th of june which is the one that Rene wise is closing i'd also then like to go to the one at the end which i think is the one that features dvs1 right is it the one no this is the one yeah on the 22nd yeah there's actually yeah, see, there's, there's actually more than that there's a 22nd one i want to go to dvs1 and gerd jansen and then there's a 29th one that features ben clock um set up mass and uh optimo and m balkheimer playing in panel bar so there's literally four separate dates i could go to and these motherfuckers out here complaining that, oh it's not that many i want more i want this it's like bro you guys in berlin don't know how bad other people have it you don't know how good you guys have it and this lineup is actually more than good in my opinion but again what do i know I don't know absolutely anything. I don't know absolutely anything. Anyway, moving on from that one. Moving on from that one. We have this courtesy of RA as well. This is pretty crazy news, but also made me kind of laugh because I was thinking to myself, like, I wonder how many DJs out here have kind of have, have had similar experiences. And I also wonder which DJ out there would people like to see in this situation and it be a successful carjacking? I'd, I'd would like to know which one because I'm sure there are some people out there that think, you know what, if so-and-so could get caught up in a carjacking, it'd actually make the world a better place. But anyway, let's read the article. Courtesy of RA, it says, Feeling lucky to be alive. Hot since 82 cancels Brazil gigs after car chase involving a gunman. Yo, those niggas in Brazil do not play. Not only will they jack your phone, not only will they take your chain, your camera, your backpack if you're not on your P's and Q's, they will try and take your car <laughs> with straps. It's like, what car was he driving? It's probably a higher car. Like, I, I doubt it was like some sort of fucking Porsche or something. It's probably some standard higher car that you drive when you're on the holiday. And these Brazilian goons still want to take that shit with guns like god damn it you could just take it by speaking portuguese loudly and i'm gonna shake you don't need to fucking whip out your gun bro speak that portuguese in a brazilian accent and you know with your with your imagine imagine a guy rolling up to you with, in a brazilian accent no speaking portuguese in a brazilian accent with havanas on golden brown scream you're gonna give them everything they don't need to pull out a gun god damn it you can always detail the hiring experience on instagram DJ and producer Hot Since 82 cancelled two gigs in Brazil over the weekend after narrowly escaping a car chase. To be fair, though, you know, that's what some people would argue that's what happens if you go to fucking Brazil and try and play Deep House. You go to Brazil trying to play business techno. They're like, bruh, what the fuck is this shit? We have our own shit. We don't, need, we, we don't want to hear business techno <laughs> in fucking Rio. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe he didn't read the room correctly. Um, detailed in the video on Instagram, the incident took place in the early hours of Saturday, May 4th, after the UK artist show at the Casa Franca Brasil in Rio de Janeiro. Um, he starts the video by saying he feels very lucky to be alive. <laughs> I want to hear what he has to say. Look at him. He looks scared, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they put the love they put the fear of god in him look at him he looks fucking scared oh my god let's see the let's actually watch it i actually want to watch this on fucking no let me actually go to his instagram account he looks absolutely scared bro he looks like he looks frightened let me just quickly go through the video bear with me a second here as it links up oh my god big up hot nights since hot this since 82 Oh, actually, I've just checked the stream chat as well. Yo, big up Young Old Vibes. Thank you for being a supporter. Big up Young Old Vibes. Thank you for being a Taz believer. I appreciate you, Young Old Vibes. I appreciate you. Um, also just saw... Um, also just saw Eli Windsor. Big up Eli Windsor. Ket is £20 a, a G in the UK. I don't really know. I don't really take Ket as much as people believe I do. But it's a good meme. But from last time I checked, Ket is actually quite expensive. Last time I checked, it's not that cheap because it's pretty popular here in the uk and everyone does it socially so last time i checked i think kit is like 30 to 40 pounds i think per g from what i remember people playing on the on the street price but again i don't really do it so i don't really know what it is day to day but the people i know it's like yeah <laughs> eli i like it lol yeah i bet you do eli i bet you do let's get the video and see what hot since 82 had to say about his experience hey guys uh 
I'm just announcing why I won't be making the Warung Festival <laughs> today in Curitiba and the Time Warp Festival later on today as well. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit broken right now. I'm just feeling very lucky to be alive. Uh, left the club at 5 a.m. Still dark. My, as my mum always said, man, nothing good honestly happens after 9 p.m. My mum always said that, and I remember back in the day, I used to hate her for saying that because it's kind of like a mood killer. Do you know what I mean? But every t every time I hear somebody having a dicey experience, it's always either late at night or early in the morning. <laughs> it's never in business hours. <laughs> you never get carjacked, you know, on your way to work or on your way back home from work. <laughs> it's always it's always when you're like been creeping in the streets you know cheating on your partner or seeing your second family or leaving a club or whatever do you know what i mean that's the only time bullshit happens 10 minutes into the car journey to the airport we've been and by the way look at diplo in the fucking comments as well How, like isn't it hor way to make it all about yourself you fucking spang damn i just landed in rio sad face bro it's not about you it's about this guy it's about fucking hot since 82 how, how do you make it all about you people that do that so subtly they always impress me how do you make it so subtly about you i just landed in rio like okay we don't give a fuck like <laughs> what just 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 extend your condolences say you're sorry it happened to him and keep it moving damn i just landed in rio you know what a trollop what i pursued by a gang of jackers, murderers, I don't know what they are, wearing <laughs> a... And a gang of black jackers, murderers, fucking niggers. <laughs> he wanted to say it so bad, didn't he? He wanted to say it so bad, fucking niggers. <laughs> A47s with four magazines at us. They've, well, we've been set up they knew exactly where we were what car and exactly where we were going to be at which time which leads me to believe that we were set up if it wasn't for the heroic maneuvers of our driver i don't even know if we'd be alive right now oh I really don't. they're their own they're their own john wick imagine getting duppied in brazil for playing fucking deep house for playing you know edm all right Oh, what, what does he play? Hot Nights Night 2. Is it, it's, it's more Deep House, isn't it? He kind of reminds her of those. I don't know what guy I'm trying to think of, but there's another dude too. I think it's from Newcastle. He kind of reminds her of that guy. It's that it's that particular brand of, you know, you know what I mean. It's that particular type of electronic music that most people don't want to hear. It's that type of stuff that you would have heard if Topshop still existed. But now you, it doesn't exist, so you don't really hear that type of music played anymore. You have to just hear it in fucking shitty Instagram videos. But again, making terrible music isn't an excuse to get carjacked. But, you know, it's up there. It's up there. Uh, we had to, we were on a busy motorway, pitch black. The car in front have pressed the brakes for us to stop. <laughs> and then the people hung out of the car windows with barraclavas and AK-47s. Wow. Our driver has put the car in reverse. We've been flying down a busy motorway in the, going the wrong way, weaving in and out of cars. If the AK-47 shooters didn't get us, then we're lucky that we didn't have a really bad car crash because we're weaving in and out of oncoming traffic going 60, 70 miles per hour. Should have got that on video, brother, man. You should have put that on video. You should have got your phone out, whipped, recorded that shit and then used the footage for like a video later on. Do you know what I mean? you gotta you know i mean you gotta make you gotta make something out of these hiring situations you know what i mean just put a video like you're sticking your tongue like that you know <laughs> as you're reversing back at fucking 80 miles per hour careering down the brazilian fucking motorway that should have been what you did bro not cower behind the back seat get your phone out isn't it if you're gonna die you might as well die in fucking fashion with the car full of ak-47s following us they were adamant they were gonna get us they wouldn't stop We've had to go miles and miles <laughs> down a motorway stop. in reverse to try mm. to get away from the, the shooters. <laughs> Obviously, as you can imagine, it was like a scene from Fast and Furious. I'm giggling about it, but I'm fucking broken inside. Like, that's... <laughs> you know, He's staring around the room. He doesn't know if they're going to crash into his room, is it? She lose faith in humanity. Knowing you, which, which humanity do you lose faith in? You lose faith in the black niggas humanity or just humanity in general? Who do you lose faith in? Hmm? 
or the coloured folk? Who do you lose faith in? Someone has told. Please describe what these jackets look like. Please describe what they look like in detail. <laughs> he showed us where we we're going to be. Someone that I've seen maybe tonight. I've had to change hotel rooms. <laughs> and uh, I booked the first flight out of here. And I, to be honest, I don't even know when I'm, if I'll ever come back to Brazil now. <laughs> good riddance, man. I'm sure some people are saying good riddance. No one's really going to miss your music like that, bro. Let's relax. You know what I mean, let's, let's chill out. <sighs> He's so scared. <laughs> I sympathize with the people of Brazil that have to live their daily life like this in fear. Leaving a club, leaving, going to a club, just DJing should be about happiness and bringing joy to people's lives, not... Mm, debatable. I love DJs and clubs much as anybody, but debatable, bro. Debatable. You niggas aren't essential workers. Like, if you all disappear tomorrow, life will be just as fine. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> leaving the club and wondering, will I get home safe? You know, I have children at home. My wife's about to deliver our next baby in six weeks time I, I i i can't risk being being in a position like like this if you care about your family you should quit djing then isn't it really it puts you in harm's way all the time you're in nightclubs surrounded by sweat drunky you know fucked up people everywhere you go maybe you know maybe your career behind the scenes you know managing people will be in line if you've got kids that's a shitty defense but you know whatever it's not worth it no dj show or fees is worth it and uh, I've had such a wicked time here in Rio as well. People are amazing, man. I like, really sympathise with the people of Brazil. That, like I said, I have to live the daily life like this. It's not fair. Humanity is cruel, man. Like it makes you lose faith in humanity, and that's where I am right now. I'm feeling a bit emotional, but I am fucking broken. So I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. He ran away. Okay, fair play, man. Um, hot night. Hot since eighty two. He's he's okay now anyway. So we can you know we can laugh because he's okay um knowing me i probably would have laughed even if he wasn't okay but regardless he is okay so we can laugh um keep your head up brother keep your head up it happens in it maybe stick to a uh, ib for and shit you know these places probably don't really blend well with the tunes they just or maybe they didn't even know who he was maybe they just saw him as a white dude and just thought he was an easy lick that also could be possible maybe they didn't have any idea who he was just saw him as an easy lick and obviously it didn't work out and obviously he's okay so everything's okay let's not cry over spilt milk let's continue um let's also talk about crystal palace v man united um actually no let's go to let's go to met gala fuck crystal palace man united i fucking hate my team let's talk about met gala first of all um let's go through some looks so this is courtesy of the one and only vogue.com as most of you guys know met gala was on the other day um, everybody looked fabulous everybody looked amazing bloody blah 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 um the theme for this particular met gala was where is it again i've got the theme here listed somebody wrote down for me um the theme was sleeping beauty was that the one or is it something i think it was something else what's dress code no sorry the dress code was garden in time that's it um the dress code was a garden in time inspired by a short story by the same name by jg ballard who is perhaps best known for his novel empire of the sun which adapts into a film by steven spurger in 1987 written in 1962 the garden of time follows a handsome sophisticated count axel and his wife the the majestic um countess who live in a remote villa in some unnamed paradise that overlooks the abundant garden of crystalline flowers with translucent leaves twinkling glass like stems and crystals at the heart of every crystal but as with most things ballad put in his name to there's a dystopian undercurrent on the tail and this eden is at risk of invasion a furious and fast encroaching mob to avoid seizure the count is forced to pluck time reversing flowers from his garden until there are none left the story ends with the count and the countess entangled in thorny uh, belladonna plants in in a decimated and derelict estate so it's a pretty good theme to be fair right a garden in time you could take obviously the name of the short story a garden in time literally and just walk in like a garden or you could take some themes from the actual story um that follows the count axel and the countess and kind of blend them into your outfit so it's a pretty you know i think some of the 
past themes of Met Gala were a little bit esoteric, a little bit vague, a little bit too much open to interpretation. But I think with this one, you could literally dress up like a character from the fucking story. You could literally imbue some of the things that happen in the story on your outfit. It's a pretty easy one to kind of get right. So I'm not surprised that a lot of these outfits that people have been talking about online have been saying that they're a little bit underwhelmed by because I felt like they all did a good job of staying on theme but no one really went crazy out there to kind of, you know, make a statement, in my personal opinion. But I don't think it was necessary. So let's get so through some of the looks here and just check out what people wore and then we can talk about the things that I liked, things that I didn't like. So um, first off on the list here, we've got Zendaya. I thought she looked amazing in this vintage Givenchy. Um, personally for me, I've always been a big fan of her red carpet looks anyway. Her and, what's his name? Law Roach do a good job in terms of pulling some amazing stuff from the archive. According to Law Roach, actually, there's a clip of him actually out there where he says um, Zendaya buys all this stuff, which is even more epic. This is not things that she's pulling from an archive or from a museum and then renting and then giving back. This is stuff that's actually going to be put in her own collection. So Zendaya's a real fashion girly. Like she's actually committed to this thing. Um, she lives her raps and this is something that she owns in her own wardrobe which is crazy because now you're thinking about all the looks that she's presented over the years she's still in her what in her 20s i think um think of all the stuff that she has to present later on think of what her wardrobe must look like bloody hell so big up zendaya vintage Givenchy. i loved it um another favorite of mine of course with the dudes was bad bunny he looks fucking incredible one of the best dressed ever actually um but i think in particular this met gala he looked fucking incredible um in this margella in this john galliano design margella piece um I, I love the headpiece i love the gloves i love the black um the the flowers maybe relating back to the poems i love the um, what you call it i love the suit especially with this exposed or kind of i think this is usually the thing that they use when they're actually stitching a suit together when you're tailoring it you have these kind of like um lines that you kind of use um to kind of follow um i also love the boots as well they kind of look like horse hooves the shoes that he's wearing with these little flaps at the front so he looks fucking incredible big up bad bunny definitely one of the best dress for the men out there um then we've got jennifer lopez looking absolutely scrumptious in this dress actually um Schiaparelli, she looks really fucking good i love this dress um it's almost sheer looking if you look at it clearly but it's got a bit of a shimmer on the background of it. it looks really really fucking nice very very well done the jewelry around the necklace is also well done as is the makeup so big up jennifer uh, lopez um you've got Gigi Hadid here and Tom Brown mm, not really too fond of that it's a bit too prommy um you've got Cardi B in Win. what well, Cardi B in Windowson Windowson personally I don't like it she looks like a you know a goth Marge Simpson I just don't give a fuck about that not for me um you've got Kendall Jenner I'm, I'm a fan of this outfit this again is vintage Givenchy I think her team put out a statement that this dress hadn't been worn in public um, it hasn't been tailored or anything and allegedly it's a one of one but then Givenchy put out a statement saying nope actually we know the rider did wear it once so you know it's all a lie but who cares about that lie um in general she looks really good in it fits like a glove so big up Kendall um you've got um Anna Wintour looking like shit as per usual we don't need to see that um you've got um what's his name Andy Cohen in Berluti and Sarah Jessica Parker Richard, wearing Richard Quinn Oh, she looks really good, Sarah Jacob, but I'm not going to lie. I really like that Richard Quinn outfit. It's a bit Balenciaga of a rip, but I, I don't mind it. I don't like Andy Cohen's smile, though. He needs to chill out with that one. Um, you've got Lola. Is it Le Le Layla or Lala? Lala, Layla. Lala, sorry. <laughs> Lala Anthony wearing um, Alexander McQueen. Pretty nice, especially the bottom bit. I'm not too mad at that. Um, you've got Ashley Graham, I think her name is right. Is it Ashley Graham? Yeah, Ashley Graham in Ludovic de saint -Sorin. Now, this is a big deal because Ashley Graham is also a big girl. And um, Ludovic de saint -Sorin is known for being a skinny mini designer. He's a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a club kid, a little bit of a, you know, the kind of person who probably doesn't take Ozempic, just doesn't eat and just has a diet of coffee, cigarettes and cum. So the fact that he's able to design for a lady this size is actually a credit to his design skills because mostly he designs for twinks and very skinny models. So the fact that he was able to dress Ashley Graham and make her look amazing is actually a credit to him. So big up Ludovic de saint she looks really good there. Um, I also like Nicole Kidman in Balenciaga. She looks fucking fantastic there, I'm not going to lie. Oh, that looks really beautiful. It's almost like a, I won't say two-tone, but there's two parts of the actual dress. You've got this bit that almost looks like it's 
so I guess it's twill, but it's made it look like it's fur. That's really cool. So you zoom out, you can't really see it. But when you zoom in, it's almost like a twill mesh type of material. It's been made to look like it's more furry. You've got Lil Nas X wearing um, Loire. You know, decent enough, I guess. Um, you know, the face is always an issue with him. He's always playing some funny face. But yeah, I like the outfit. I don't really mind too tough. Uh, you've got Gwenaldine Christie. And when Margella again, she looks really good as well. I love the pose. She actually looks really bang. She actually looks like the model in the runway. I'm not going to lie. Especially with the theatrics with the posing and shit. It's a big up her. you got Emma Chamberlain and John Paul Gaultier. By the way, big up Emma Chamberlain. She might be one of the best success stories to come out of YouTube. She might be one of the best success stories to come out of that whole YouTube vlogging era. Because Emma Chamberlain legitimately single-handedly was the one that brought about the whole quirky white girl thing. Um, especially with the way that she presented herself on camera, the editing style. Like, she was a real, you know, game changer in that respect. Like, probably the only one after probably Casey Neistat. Because I remember when Casey Neistat was, you know, he's still big now, but when he was the guy on YouTube, everybody copied Casey Neistat's style of vlogging. Then Emma Chamberlain came around, everyone started copying her style of vlogging, right? Sitting in the car, the scrunchies, the water bottles, the coffees, the random rants, the weird editing, the lowercase titles, like all this shit that she kind of pioneered. And then she just kind of pivoted away from it and decided to do like big girl things, um, you know, start her own business and kind of move away from doing vlogs and doing more like, you know, I don't know what you'd call them long form videos, maybe mini movie type of things. And now she's become like a proper, you know, um, well established person outside of YouTube now to the point that she's getting inv invited to the Met Gala on a regular basis so big up Emma Chamberlain man like she's done way more like imagine her and Tana Mogo like if you had to if you had to compare them I know they're both doing perfectly fine but you know she's definitely pulled away from the pack and definitely made a mark for herself so big up Emma Chamberlain nice to see um, Lana Del Rey looks really cool as well the Ozempic is hitting she looks fucking great I don't see a droopy face with her so again it proves that if you take Ozempic responsibly you can also look amazing Lana Del Rey looks fucking banging she looks exactly as she came out when she first came out in the scene love to see that um, another one from Zendaya look at that she looks this is probably my favourite outfit of hers to be fair this uh, Margella by John Galea might be my favourite of hers she looks so good the makeup looks so fucking fantastic all the trees like yeah I, I love i love everything about it it almost looks a little bit i'm not gonna lie it almost looks a little bit african auntie-ish there's something a bit nigerian about this i'm not too sure what it, what it is but something almost nigerian about this that i also like so big up her um you got emirata emi um I'm, I'm not really too fond of this i'm not gonna lie it's giving one oak it's not really a met gala look for me but it's still nice versace and chopard um yep less said about that the better uh, then we have who we have here Elsa Patek and Chris Hemsworth for once an American guy with a suit that fits great nice to see big up Chris Hemsworth I also like the boots as well the boots are really nice Naomi Campbell you know despite the Weinstein and other allegations she always keeps getting invited to things so it's proof that pretty privilege is real <laughs> big up auntie Naomi looking fucking crazy there and absolutely amazing as well in Burberry and Brioni Raymond then you've got Jessica Biel here looking in Tamara Ralph and Cartier nice to see uh is that Irina Shrek yeah Irina Shrek wearing Sawalski she's wearing is that a Swarovski outfit so it's all made out of diamonds wow not really on, on brand with the theme but still doesn't mind and she almost looks like a bit yellow isn't it why does she look yellow she look like she's she look like she just escaped Chernobyl she looks a little bit yellow don't know why she looks yellow maybe it's a hint of the maybe it's the camera I don't know what's happened there um who else you got here who's this lady Sienna Miller why wow, is that what Sienna Miller looks like fucking hell she looks she looks good isn't it Sienna Miller was, you know, most of you will know Sienna Miller. She was a, an it girl back in the day, kind of, you know, um, just after, well, b oh, just after, before Kate Moss's time. But considering she was a party girl and was out in the streets a lot, she looks fairly good. I, I wonder if she's gone sober or something because I didn't expect her to look like this. She looks very young in the face. Maybe she's got some stuff pulled back and stuff. But yeah, big up Sienna Miller, ever young. Um, Then you've got Ayo Edeberry again. I'm not really too fond of the outfit, I'm not going to lie, but she's lovely and she's a great actor, so big up her in Luebe, but I don't like the outfit, but we love her anyway. Dua Lipa looks horrendous in this, I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, 
Dua Lipa, she got done dirty in this. Mark Jacobs and Tiffany and Co. This looks like a mess. Just like, you know when a girl tries on her mum's clothes for the first time? This is what it kind of looks like. Like, ugh, awful. Hate it. Um, you got Greta Gerwig. Ooh, Greta Gerwig's been on the Ozempi as well, bro. Greta Gerwig wasn't this wasn't this much of a skinny mini. I watched a bit of the Barbie press tour. I saw Greta Gerwig. She didn't look like this. She'd gone back to what she used to look like, but Ozempic has been... Oh, I need to get on Ozempic, bro. She look, she's looking fantastic. Pick up Greta Gerwig. Oh, God. We've got Amanda Seedfried here in Prada. Not for me. you got... um. <laughs> look at Ariana Grande. Why is she standing like that for? Why is she... She loves how skinny her legs... She loves, she loves to show off her neckline. Her her collarbone and a and a jawline, isn't it? She's always like, like, <laughs> why is she standing like that? Come on, Ariana, babe, and look at the arms compared to the face, like the cut. Yeah, oh, big up Ariana Grande. She's a legend. Oh, I love this. Big up Zoe Sal Zoe Saldana. She looks fantastic in this Chloe outfit. Even the belt has got in the gaudy, but she looks really good. That color matches her skin beautifully. Love it. Um, Kylie Jenner might as well stay at home. Bit of a prom dress. This it's giving prom. Not really a fan of it. Not for me. Um, Usher. Usher looking like a Valentine's Day wizard or something. I don't know why I'm going with this. Not for me either. What is it? Alexander McQueen. Alexander no. Lily James in Erdem. Kiki Palmer looks really good. I love this outfit actually. Just on the look, Mark Jacobs. Wow, yeah. Kiki Palmer looks brilliant. I love this. Um, oh, yeah. Big up Chloe Savengi. She looks really good in this also. In Dilaria Finkidulgu. Oh, that's a lady that everyone hates, isn't it? She's supposed to be a horrible boss, but this is a brilliant outfit. Yeah, big up, big up, big up, big up, big up, big up, big up Chloe Savengi. Uh, who else is this? Tiana Taylor. I'm not mad at that. I probably like the hair more than the dress, to be fair. I think I love the top bit more than the dress. The dress I'm not really too fond of, but what do I know? <laughs> Why is Sarah Paulson saying like that for? She looks like your mum. You know, they come to pick you up after school or something. I've been told you've been causing a mess in school. I've been told you've been causing a ruckus. I've had to leave a function to come pick you up, young man. <laughs> it's like, what's happening? Why is she saying like that for? Relax, Sarah Paulson, relax. Um, who's this? Oh, Cynthia Ervia. Okay, yeah, the actor, right? Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm not fond of that. Not for me. It's giving art school. Not for me. Um, we've got Kerry Washington here, looking really nice in this Oscar De La Rente purple plum number. Not mad at that at all. Mindy Kaling in a Gaurav Gupta. Jordan Roth in Valentino. Pamela Anderson in Oscar de la Rente. Oh, look at that. Odell Beckham Jr. in Bode. Oh, that's an awful outfit, man. He deserves much better than that. But I've got to be honest. I have to say, I don't think Met Gala's, especially the themes, they're not meant for, like, straight dudes. They're meant for the ladies and the gays. They're, meant, they're the ones that are meant to go fucking crazy on the runway, on the red carpet with the themes. I think the dudes, you should turn up in just a lovely tux, well cut, bow tie and just do your thing it's not meant for you to kind of peacock it's meant for the fashion people the ladies and the gays that's it everyone else just wear your tux and keep it moving you're not meant to partake in it in my opinion but again what do i know because there's nothing really you he could do what are, you, what are you gonna do you're gonna wear a flower on your fucking jeremy you know I it doesn't really sit to the thing you might just go with a nicely cut suit and go from there um but yeah um rosalia looks fucking fantastic she looks so good would definitely definitely risk it all for rosalia for sure you know um kai gerber looks phenomenal in this prada outfit wow that dress is what what the fuck is that it almost looks like fish scales isn't it that looks so beautiful love it um yeah big up kai gerber uh greta lee in this luebe also looks very nice i'm not going to lie another luebe maybe my favorite outfit of the night has to be taylor russell she might have to be the one. Taylor Russell might have to be the one. Taylor Russell and Bad Bunny because this wooden Luwebe top. By the way, this is like funny because this is actually, you remember that Fia Vaughn joke where he says about the wooden t-shirt? This is like a wooden dress. Look at that shit, bro. Look at that. 
That is so fucking insane. A wooden top with these little flower designs and top. You know, like that looks so fucking good. I'd love to see how they made this actually. I'm sure there's a video how they put it together. But yeah, um Taylor Russell looks absolutely phenomenal. Like what an outfit. That definitely has to be my favourite of um Met Gala twenty twenty four, I'm not gonna lie. And again, yeah, I I'm not I'm not mad at Jack Harlow's suit. All the all the straight dudes that just wore regular, you know, put together suits. I don't mind it. Because they've all been tailored. Look fucking phenomenal. He looks really good. Dior suit by Kim Jones. I like it. Oh, that's that good lady that puts on the black voice, isn't it? Aquafina in H&M. Okay, cool. Fair play. I don't know who this lady is. Aurora James looking devilish there. And look, another nice suit. Francesco and who? And B. Carzoni. Nice to see. You've got Carly Trump close there. We don't care about her. Um, FKA Twigs and Stella McCartney. Love to see that as well. She looks good. I like this actually. I'm not going to mind. I like that. I like that. Showing off the physique as well. Oh, and Tyler in Balmain. Oof. This might be one of my other favorite outfits. The outfit created to make it look like sand. And her being an hourglass figure holding the sand. Like, she looks amazing in this. Like, wow. Obviously, the body is bodying, but Jesus Christ. The, how they put this shit together, I don't fucking know. But this is phenomenal. This is phenomenal. And that's the first, that's her first Met Gala ever, by the way. This this young lady that's going to pop out of the scene from nowhere. It's just burst on the scene and just delivered a fucking 10 out of 10 <laughs> debut on the Met Gala runway. Like, wow. Yeah. Tyler smashed it. Ty um, Tyler, um, Taylor Russell, and of course, Bad Bunny being my favorite so far. You got this guy, Joshua O'Connor. He's, he's from the movie Challengers, right? Honestly, like being famous, I, again, I, I'm no judger of men's looks because, you know, I'm not trying to fuck them, but still being famous helps in it because this guy's in a movie that tennis movie with them zendaya and shit where they're all fucking each other and you know i don't know about you guys but i live here he looks like any other person i've seen in a pub but the ladies are going goo goo gaga for him on the fucking timeline they're all thirsting for this guy and he legitimately looks like every guy i've seen in a pub from stoke and Newton to hackney downs like he to fucking peck him <laughs> you'll see a version of this guy <laughs> on their bike on the way to the fucking pub but if you're in a movie it changes everything so big up him his dms must be on fire right now so big up josh o'connor enjoy it enjoy it enjoy it you know what i mean enjoy enjoy your time in the sun brother it is what it is harry neff in h&m you got quino someone else and something else here Dwayne Wade and his wife Gabrielle Union in Michael Kors and Versace respectively again I, I love this this is what you're meant to do as a dude just come in in a nice tailored suit so I loved it I love that everybody that's wearing a suit so far I've seen is wearing um Chelsea boots I've always been a big fan of wearing Chelsea boots with suits because I feel like the it kind of gives you this clean line so you get this clean seamless line from like your foot to your pant especially if you're the same color I feel like with like loafers or like brogues, it breaks them up because you've got the laces there. But I prefer I prefer a shoe like this. I prefer a Chelsea boot, you know, or whatever, like to kind of give you this clean sweep from your foot and up. I quite like that. So I like that everyone's wearing one of those. So big up. Oh, this is a lovely outfit too. This actually might be one of my favorites as well. Who's this? Eli Fanning. Is it Ellie? Ellie Fanning. Eli Ellie Fanning. She looks incredible in this. This is really fucking beautiful. What is it? Who's, who made this? Barmain and Cartier. Yeah, this is really nice. I've got a long list of favorites here. This is really nice. I love that. Um, who's this? Amanda. Yeah, this is giving too much prom. I don't like this at all. This is prom giving. Not a fan of that. Oh, I don't mind this actually. Paloma Elsa in, in HM. Oh yeah, it's the only problem, in it. You got the you got the roll sticking out here on the side. That's a bit mad. Still. It did it a bit dirty there, isn't it? But yeah, still, don't really mind that. Fair. You've got Janelle Monet very aware of Vieira Wang. Nah. Um, Nicki Minaj and Marnie. I like that, actually. I'm not mad at that at all. Is that Sydney Sweeney? Wow, Sydney Sweeney as a, as a brunette, is just, she's still kind of flames, isn't it? Let's not lie. Sydney Sweeney as a brunette is still tearing up trees, bro. I don't mind this. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Uh yeah, um Doja Cat in that Vetmon looks less said about that the better. Kim Kardashian's look as well. I really liked it. I know some people didn't, but I actually liked it. 
um, Erica Badu in Comme des Garçons. Cool. Who's that? Jesus, look at the back on that. Jesus Christ, that's great. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, for a precious lean bad binge. Dong, dong, cool. Who's this person? Is that Sabrina Carpenter? Wow, cool. She always looks scared, isn't it? Doesn't Sabrina Carpenter look like somebody that says, Sabrina? Right? Whenever you see Sabrina Carpenter, she's always got the face of somebody that just heard her name whispered. Sabrina. Sabrina. <laughs> oh, wow Barry Ke Barry Cogan looks hot looks very sick very 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 sick and very tired um Serena Williams in Balenciaga you got Lewis Hamilton in Burberry and you get the gist you get the fucking gist you get the gist you get the fucking gist Oh shit, I think he's pregnant. Big up Adoa, Adoa Aboa. Ad, Ad, that's, that's probably why I haven't seen her. Adoa, sorry, Adoa Aboa. That's probably why I haven't seen her around in the scene. She's been quiet. Okay, she's got pregnant. Congrats to her, Zen. She's a well known model here in the UK. Um, but yeah, she's pregnant. Okay, fair play to her. Fair play. She's preggers. Cara Delevingne came through. Probably got a couple of grams underneath that hood in it, right? A couple of eight balls underneath that hood. Big up fucking Cara Delevingne. Couple of eight balls under that hood. Law Roach. Yeah. And who else is this? That's Alexander S. Skardgard. Big up him. And Storm Reed. I don't know who that is. Angela Reese as well there. Looking great. Oi. That's Vera Wang, isn't it? Whenever they put a picture up on social media, they're like, oh, I can't believe she's like 80. It's like, I can believe it. I can't believe it. Um, she looks like an old lady. <laughs> you know, not that it's a bad thing, but people always put the meme up on there. Oh my god, she's so fucking young looking. Mm, is she though? Is she though? Um, <laughs> big up Jude Law. We love to see. Oh yeah, big up my guy Charlie Hunnam. Big up my guy Charlie Hunnam. Big up my guy. If you know, you know, bro. Fucking bad boy actor. And doesn't do interviews, doesn't have it, doesn't have social media, just does the art, does the work, keeps it moving, loves his family, love him, love him, love him. And of course we got Giovanna Giovanna Eng Engelbert there as well. This lady, Rachel Sonnet, and a few other people. Anyway, who cares? We're gonna end it there. Leave leave that there. I don't give a fuck. For the most part, everyone dressed well. Um, I didn't really mind the theme too much. Let people be a little bit more chill and relaxed. And they got the job done. They all got the job done. Anyways, my friends, that is it. I'm going to end it there. That has been the Action of Zinger Show episode number 775. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual. For those of you tuning in the show via the live stream, please let it be known that I will, of course, be doing a random show in about 10 minutes. So if you are waiting for the random show, that'll be happening in about 10 minutes. 10 minutes random show happening. 10 minutes random show will be happening. But for now, it's been episode number 775 of the Action of Zinger Show. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for hanging out with me. It's been a pleasure. Never, ever, 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 ever a chore um today i'm gonna play for you my tune of the day and my tune of the day today actually i was actually playing it earlier there we go tune of the day today is gonna be a tune from the lovely charlotte o'day right i'm um, sorry charlotte day wilson sorry charlotte o'day charlotte day wilson has a new album out at the moment which is called cyan blue or cyan blue um, as most of you will know, that's the color in the RGG book. So we're going to play a track from the album, from her new album called Cyan Blue. And the track I'm going to play, what should I play? Should I play Last Call, Canapé, or I Don't Love You? No, let's play Forever. Fuck that. Let's play the hit. Let's play the hit. Um, so this is a track courtesy of Sade Wilson, features Snow Allegra. I'm sure some of you know who Snow Allegra is. The track is called Forever um, Via charlotte day wilson featuring snow allegra that is my outro track for the day thank you for tuning in it's been a pleasure never your flipping concern or chore any links to do with me can be found in the show description if you're listening via the audio side of the podcast please leave me a five-star review on the apple or spotify podcast app and i'll be greatly appreciated but for now this is charlotte day wilson and snow allegra forever and i'll see you guys again very very soon peace